we've got a whole heap of questions that have already come in and we've got, we've, we've got a little bit of time now, which is great. So could decommissioned coal mines in Victoria be used for pumped hydro? The answer is yes, but the head, that's the height difference between the upper and lower reservoirs is probably fairly miserable. Why settle for one or 200 metres when you can go a few hundred kilometres away into the Victorian Alps and get 600 metres? If you double the head, then you double the power, you double the energy, but you don't double the cost. So that, I, mean, I think that um, there's a good flow on question there. Maybe if you could step us through what, what makes a good site for pumped hydro? You've talked a bit about height differential. Okay, a good height is to have a, la a good, um, uh, the requirement is to have a large head, a steep hill so that your pipe or tunnel is very short, and um, a, 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 um, a landform that allows you to store a large amount of water for a small amount of rock and uh, obviously the other subsidiary ones like accessibility for roads and um, power lines. And we're finding thousands of sites, most of which um, meet these criteria very well. So it'd be just a matter of choosing which one's most suitable for you. Great. And just on that, do you have any sort of uh, a rule of thumb as to how much pumped hydro you need as you kind of in, uh, increase the penetration of their uh, renewable? Yes, we do. For a 100% renewable electricity system, you need 400 to 500 gigawatt hours of storage. In our modelling, we've assumed pump storage because it's easy to cost. Um, uh, but of course, it's going to be pumped hydro and batteries, car batteries, stationary batteries, and it's certainly going to be demand management. And as I mentioned, you can do some trading between stronger, stronger interconnection with less storage or more storage and less interconnection. They're, they're tradable. Mm -hmm. I think there's a great question that's just, come, uh, that's just come. Based on your presentation, pumped hydro ticks all three of the energy trilemma boxes. What are the main barriers to commercial? Uh, the main barriers are very clearly that we haven't got to 50% or so renewables in the Australian national electricity market. South Australia has, so South Australia needs to be thinking about more interconnection or pumped hydro, but uh, the rest of Australia is not, and so there's no drivers. So the um, existing pumped hydro in Australia doesn't work very hard. However, we need to start uh, planning now so that we can make sure that we've got the interconnectors and the pumped hydro ready in hopefully 2022 or 23, when we get to 50% in the rest of the NEM. Yeah, great. And in terms of the economics, we are smashing through these questions, by the way. It's very, it's good form here. Um, <laughs> do we, um, what's the optimal size, or does that change by location? So is it 10 kilowatts, or is it 10 megawatts, or is uh, it 100 It's more megawatts? like 100 to 1,000 megawatts. Yep. And uh, so you might be looking at 30 to 100 systems scattered from North Queensland through to South Australia, and everywhere in between and many wind farms, for example, which are often are on hilly areas because the wind's better, might make use of a pumped hydro in order to make sure that the constrained power line that connects them to the main east coast backbone runs 24 hours a day rather than just when the wind blows. Ditto for solar. Fantastic. And with that, we will finish. So, right, ladies and gentlemen, Professor Andrew Blake is doing it. Thank you so much. That was magnificent.